An important thing to understand for this problem is the concept of symmetry with electric charges. If you have a point and there are two point charges at equal distances away from it that have the exact same sign and magnitude of charge, then their electrical effects on that central point will be cancelled out because they are equal. Understanding that concept makes answering this question very easy because we can look for pairs of charges that are going to cancel each other out and then ignore them. For example, let's start with this positive 6q of charge. Recall that electric field lines begin at positive charges and end at negative charges. So there is going to be an electric field line emanating from, away from this positive charge that is going to pass through the point P in this direction. However, we can see that there is another point charge, positive 6q, the exact same magnitude and sign of charge, that is again going to set up its own electric field pointing in the opposite direction at point P. So, so there's going to be electric field lines coming away from this bottom right charge, and where point P is, it's pointing in the opposite direction. So we can see that these two charges are going to effectively cancel each other out because of the fact that they cross paths. So we can basically just ignore these two charges entirely, and now we have two fewer charges to worry about. Let's go through every charge on this diagram, look for pairs of charges like that, and cancel them out. So looking at this inner square, there is a negative 3q and a negative 3q on opposite diagonal ends of the square, so those can be ignored. There's a negative q here and another negative q there, again, equal charges, opposite ends. Same with these two positive 2q's. These negative 2q's cancel out, these positive 3q's cancel out, and all we're left with is this negative 2q and this negative q on the other side. Those two charges cannot cancel out because they have different magnitudes. However, since we've gotten rid of every other charge, this problem is now way easier to work with. In fact, if you really want to, you actually can still do a little bit of canceling out, because on the right side, we have the equivalent of one charged particle with a negative q charge, but on the left side, we have the equivalent of two different charged particles, each with a charge of negative q. So if you want, you can actually sort of cancel out one of these charges so that literally all we have, the only charge we have affecting point P in the middle, is a magnitude of one negative q charge on the left-hand side, since that is the net charge of this pair. So, a way, to, a way to think about this, a very simplified way to think about what's physically going on, is that we have our point P, and that somewhere to the left we have a charge of negative Q. That is basically just as accurate of a way to represent the net effects of this system, and notice that this is way simpler than this scary looking mess on the left, where we have this kind of diagonal angle of the mi middle square, and it turns out we don't need to worry about any of that. All we need to do is worry about the electric field effects of this one point charge of negative Q. And remember that the electric field due to a point charge is given by the charge divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times the square of the distance between them. So the square of the distance from this charge to P. And the problem tells us that that's what D represents. So that is D squared. And since it's only one particle, we don't have to modify this equation at all. It's just, this is just the formula for the electric field due to that point. It's Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught D squared. Though the problem does ask for the direction as well, and that is important to know, because since the charge is negative, Remember, electric field lines end at negative charges. So from the perspective of point P, there should actually be an electric field pointing leftward through point P, terminating at the charge. So this is the magnitude. This formula I've written is the magnitude of the field, and it's directed leftward.
And so that is it for this question. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. If you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.